Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> it's way too slow for me. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Oh, goodness. We got a, let, a, let, a letter from our missionaries uh, in Nepal, the Freemans, and uh, so I thought I'd read that to you. Uh, it says, uh, this is dated January 2019. Uh, in December, we usually focus our attention on Christmas and the coming new year. Last year, several events took place in the fall that we would like to mention in our last update of 2018. First, in October, there was a wedding. Our pastor's son... I'm not sure I'm going to, I know I'm not going to pronounce it right. K-S-H-I-T-I-Z, however that's pronounced, was married in Flint, Michigan. He and Brenma uh, met while attending BBC. Jeevan and Usha, I'm, not, I'm guessing at the names, uh, were able to be at the wedding from Kathmandu. About 25 relatives uh, from the families in Nepal were there. Uh, they are not Christians. Uh, our good friend Jim Edge performed the ceremony. It was a wonderful day, and the gospel was preached and demonstrated openly to Jivan and Usha's families. Secondly, uh, we had a dedication and an ordination service for our new church in Dading in September. Uh, the new congregation who chose the name Bethlehem Baptist Church and the pastor and his wife were commissioned by the Kathmandu Church. Third, our young adults at the, at the church continue to grow. In November, we baptized three young people. Since November, three additional young people have accepted Christ. We are planning another baptismal service at the end of February. Last we, had a, last, we had a wonderful Christmas this year. We had two special blessings. The first blessing was our oldest daughter, Melissa, and her family came to Nepal for the holidays. They were here for 10, day, 10 days and celebrated Christmas with the church on Christmas Day. We were busy the entire 10 days, but thrilled to have family here at Christmas. The second blessing was one of the Lord's greatest, great timing for us all. In the early hours of New Year's Day, at 4, 4.20 a.m., our associate pastor, Gopal and his wife Mira welcomed their first child into the world, a little girl. She was healthy and weighed in at seven pounds. We will dedicate the baby the first of the week on February. I included several photos of all the events this fall at Kathmandu. The Lord has been faithful both to the church and to my family over the years. We believe he will continue to do so in 2019. Thank you for your faithfulness to us in prayer and support in 2018. May the Lord richly bless your church and ministry this year. Uh, so I'll leave, the, I'll leave the letter and the, the pictures up here if you'd like to see them. You can take a look at that, and then we'll, we'll post the letter um, at the, uh, on the back wall. Uh, but what a blessing it is to know that God is working. Um, in, in Kathmandu and, and, and the other churches, I can't name everywhere they're at, but uh, praise the Lord for that. And it's good to see um, that, that, that they're able to reach their young people. Uh, with that, also keep the, uh, the, uh, the other uh, family. Dev, I, we're online. I can't say it. There, he said it. I can't say it because we're online. Uh, uh, I, I caught it just before it came out of my mouth. We got about halfway out. Uh, keep them in prayer uh, while they're there, um, and uh, just to continue to pray for all of our missionaries. Um, go ahead and take your Bibles, and uh, we're going to look at Second Peter, three eighteen. We we started this. This uh, the education of the believers last week. I'm going to do my very best uh, to to finish finish it up to, today. Uh, but we'll start again with Second Peter 3:18, and then we'll move move on. I'm actually really excited about the next chapter. Um, it's it's on finances. You think, oh, we're going to talk about tithing? Yes. Uh, I'm sure that's part of it. I know that's part of it, honestly. Uh, but it's not just about tithing. It's about managing our finances according to the Word of God. Because the Bible gives us a lot of principles on how to deal with our, with our finances at home. And if every Christian would run their finances like the Bible tells us to run our finances, we wouldn't be in any trouble. And we'd have no trouble uh, in helping others when they need help and in and sharing with others. What a blessing it was that, that we were able, that our church was able to put together the the. the Twenty twenty two hundred dollars for the for the ramp. I mean, that's well, that's a blessing. Um, there's a reason God gives us extra. It's to give it to others. Second Peter three eighteen. Again, we'll read it. It says, "But grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory." 
both now and forever. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I ask for your help this, this afternoon as we study your word. I pray that you would speak to each one of us, Lord, uh, in this, in this uh, area of, of, our, of our biblical education. Help us uh, to, to look at how we're to be educated and why we're to be educated. Lord, it, how important it is for us to, to grow in the knowledge of your word and to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Uh, help us to never get complacent in that, Father. I pray that you would watch over us as a church and help us to, to be exactly what you've called us to be, that we might be able to handle your word efficiently, Lord, and correctly, uh, that we might not only know it, but, Lord, live it. Uh, we thank you, Father, again, for all that you do for us. Help us now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, last week we, we looked at, after I preached when we got into the lesson, uh, we looked at uh, how the Bible tells us we're to, to teach all nations and baptize those who believe, but then not only were we to teach them the gospel, to preach to them the gospel, we're also to teach them whatsoever things God had commanded us. Uh, that's Matthew chapter tw uh, Matthew 28, uh, verse 20 tells us to do that, and how it's, it's the, the goal, or should be the goal, of every believer to be able to teach those things. And before we can teach those things, what must we do first? Before you can teach anything, what, what do you have to do? You have to learn it, exactly. Uh, it wasn't that long ago we went through in our, in our adult Sunday school class all those things, those things that Christ had commanded us. We went through each one of the commandments and, and took a look at those things because how can we teach somebody else what the Bible says about it if we've not studied it out ourselves? So it's important that we know those things. Uh, we looked at uh, Acts 11.26. You don't have to turn there. I'm just uh, kind of trying to catch us up to where, where we are now. Uh, we looked at 11.26 and saw where Barnabas and, and Saul, for one year, they, they taught in the, in Antioch, and uh, they, they were teaching the, the church in Antioch, the, the scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.12, the, 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 the use of the spiritual gifts, part of it was for teaching, uh, and, and that was teaching the word of God, and it's used for the edifying or the building up of the church. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.15, uh, where the, 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 the word of God is to be the, the, the pillar, the, the ground in which we, uh, we build the church. It's Jesus Christ, amen, and, 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 his, and his word. We looked at who's to be educated, or, or who are to educate believers, and the apostles were educators. The, uh, the Bible teaches that we're to teach one another, right, through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We looked at uh, that uh, uh, some things are taught uh, to us by nature, and the First Corinthians eleven four. We didn't look at this first, but it, said, it says, "Doth not nature itself teach you uh, that it is a shame for a man to have long hair?" Uh, other things are taught to us by Scripture. Uh, some are taught by self study. Second Timothy two fifteen, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, some, some things will be taught, by, to, will teach ourselves and, and by the Holy Spirit as we study the word of God. And the, and the biggest thing we really hit on last week was this, that you don't need me to teach you the word of God. You have the Holy Spirit within you to teach you the, the word of God. Uh, that doesn't mean I, we shouldn't be preaching the word or we, sh we shouldn't be teaching the word. What that means is you need to be fed up when you get here. So whatever you get is just extra. And then you can, you can take what I say and compare it to Scripture. Uh, you're not to be ignorant. Uh, there's no reason that any child of God should ever be ignorant of the Scriptures. Um, we, are to, we are to be able to rightly divide them ourselves and to, to, to fully understand those things. Um, some things will be taught by other believers. Some things will be taught in the home. And we looked at all of these things. Uh, the last thing we, we looked at was that pastors were to be teachers or to be instructors. And look at with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. As we're getting ready to start jumping from scripture to scripture, um, I'm going back to my, my cell phone because it's much easier to flip through passages this way. First Corinthians chapter 12, 28. If, if I'm going too fast, just write it down. Um, it's, 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 that way you can follow it up later. First, cha First Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 28. It says, And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, third, thirdly teachers, after the miracles, then gifts of healing, helps governments, diversities of tongues. Uh, it's, it, is a, it is a requirement of a pastor that he, has, that he is able to teach. The, the Bible says they must be apt to teach. Uh, uh, pastors are to teach, and God put, put pastors in the church to teach. He also put some other people with that same gift. Uh, our Sunday school teachers should have that, that gift of, of teaching. It should not just be a body to fill a spot, right? Uh, we need to make sure that, uh, that, uh, that and, and, and seek the, the, to use the, the right gifts that God has given to us. Uh, look with me to uh, 
First Timothy chapter three. A pastor uh, must be qualified. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Uh, Pastors must be qualified teachers. Uh, Look at 2 Timothy 2, 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness and instructing those that oppose. What is worse than a teacher that that doesn't want to teach? There is very little worse than that. If you're a student and you have a desire to learn, and you're sitting under somebody's instruction, what is, uh, I can remember when I was in in paramedic school, there were some teachers that were really good. They were passionate about it. They had a a, a love of 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 what they were teaching us. And then there was, we had one specific teacher, and uh, none of you know, know her, she was, she literally, it was, it was, she was very good at uh, the, those PowerPoint presentations. And by very good, I mean she knew how to push the button and read off the slide. Um, it was the worst class ever. Nobody learned anything. There was no interaction. It was all read monotone. ABCs of Christian maturity. E, education. Click. And then on to the next. Listen, a, a teacher needs to be apt to teach. Uh, and to be able to teach scripture, you, you need a few things. Here we're talking about the qualification uh, that God puts in certain people, the gift to teach. And it, it, we need to be able, pastors need to be able to teach. Uh, they need to have that, that gift and that desire to, to teach the word of God. It's one good thing to sit down and talk about scripture. It's another thing to teach scripture. Uh, a, 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 we, pastors need to be careful. I need to be careful that that uh, that it's not what I think, or how do we feel about this passage of scripture, but it's what the Word of God says and teaches, it, right? Because because we're we're not perfect and we can make those mistakes. Uh, uh, but we need to make sure that we teach the the Word of God. In fact, the Bible says that the pastor is to teach uh, the whole counsel of the Word of God, which means all of it. Uh, Titus chapter one verse nine. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 9. It says, Holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. The pastor must be able by holding fast to what? The faithful word. What is that? This book right here. Holding fast to, the, fast to the doctrines of this book, never swaying, never swerving, never walking away, uh, holding fast to this, then be able to, by sound doctrine, to convince and to instruct and to teach uh, against those that, those that may disagree. Uh, it, it can't just be, well, because I said so. Because what I say so doesn't matter. Here, let me show you what the Bible has to say about that question you just asked me. Because the truth is, I, and, and I, I love this because I, don't, I know that I have no wisdom. Somebody asked me about something, I'm like, you know, I know a Bible, uh, I know the, the scripture talks about this. Let's look at this because don't ask me, I've got nothing for you. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's by sound doctrine, it's by the word of God. Uh, so pastors must be qualified to teach. Uh, one uh, with the gift of teaching and also they must, be able to, they must be able to buy sound doctrine with the knowledge of the word of God and holding to that knowledge. Uh, pastors are to specialize in teaching specifically the word of God. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2, it says, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. We are, we are, pastors are commanded, or bishops are commanded to feed the flock of God. It's not talking about eating lunch. It's talking about the, the word of God. And, and, and so, again, I, and I had mentioned this last week. Uh, somebody had approached me because I, um, I had said, don't come to church to be fed. My intent was correct, my, the wording was wrong. Come to church to be fed, 
but make sure you're eating at home. That was my intent. You need to be, sure, you need to be studying the Word of God uh, on your own and then coming to church expecting to be fed. Uh, look at Acts chapter 6, verse 4. The apostles here uh, have decided to, uh, in Acts chapter 6, they're looking to fill some, some spaces um, to, of people to uh, take care of some physical needs, some ministering to the, to the widows that uh, had been, was being missed uh, because there, just, there was too many people. They, they, some people had been overlooked. Here in Acts chapter 6, verse 4, it says this, But we will, speaking of the apostles, uh, it says, give ourselves continually to prayer, and to the ministry of the word. It's important. I need time as a pastor uh, to, to study the word of God. Uh, now, I can't lock myself in that office and never come out, except for, except for when I go home. And, and that's, there, there are other parts of, of ministry. There are other parts, of, there are other things. A uh, pastor is to, be, uh, to do the work of an evangelist. I can't do that locked in my office. But there must be time. And, and, and listen, it, it, it's, what's good for the pastor is good for the people. Listen, there's got to be a set time for, that you lock yourself away, that you pull yourself away from the people that are around you. Get yourself alone with the Word of God and with God, and you spend time in prayer and study. It's, it's absolutely necessary uh, for, the, for our growth uh, to be able to grow in grace, as we read there in Second Peter chapter 3. Um, look at, with me at... Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. This is, this is Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. We're going to look at verse 28. He's, he's getting ready to, to, to leave. He's, to, he's giving them some last instructions. He says to the elders of the church, Take, their, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the flock of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Uh, a, a pastor is, is an overseer. Notice, uh, is, uh, he's an under-shepherd. Uh, uh, it's, it's uh, the church is not the pastor's flock. The church is, belongs to God. Christ has purchased it with his own blood. The pastor is just uh, it's the sheepdog. It's uh, the under-shepherd. And, and, uh, uh, but it, it is his job, it is his calling to feed the flock of God, and again, that's through the Word of God. First Timothy chapter four. Verse six. It says, if, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and, good, and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Uh, there are some things that you may even already know. You've studied it yourself. It's good to be reminded of those things. It may be something that you were taught uh, in a previous time. It's, it is the pastor's job, uh, the bishop's job, to help remind you of those things. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. So just jump down a few verses. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift of the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Uh, again, this is Paul speaking to Timothy. He says, "Don't neglect this doctrine. Don't neglect this uh, these truths. Uh, you're to exhort and to encourage. And as as we already know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. For what?" For, for a proof, for doctrine. For, for, so it's, it's, we're talking of the word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. And again, speaking of, of elder and bishop and, and, and pastor are interchangeable words. Uh, so he's saying that let the, that elder who labors in the word and doctrine uh, that, that he's to be given double honor. Uh, again, it's, it's talking about those pastors who are, that's what they're to do and how they're to be cared for uh, specifically. But um, look at First Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. So go back to First Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Notice a lot of these verses are in Timothy. There's a reason. Because Timothy was, was a, a young pastor that Paul was, 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 uh, was instructing. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, it says, these, 
uh, go back to verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer approach because we trust the living God who is the Savior of all men. These things command and teach. Uh, we are to, we're to teach and, 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 and command, or command and teach the church. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 2, I jump down to chapter 6, verse 2. It says we're to exhort. It says, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. These are all truths that, uh, that Paul was telling Timothy that he needed, uh, that he needs to teach uh, his, his, his people. Uh, or the flock of God among in, in, before him. Uh, look at Second uh, Timothy chapter four, verse two. It says in verse two, uh, we'll read verse one. It says the. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at, the, at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, there's, the, again, another, com the command uh, is to teach and to preach the word of God, not, not his feelings, not, not his customs, not his traditions, but the word of God. It's the word of God that saves. It's the word of God that helps us to grow and sanctifies us. Uh, it is not, um, it is nothing by man. Uh, now, looking at pastors and the fact that they've been called to, to preach, uh, pastors have a threefold, uh, there's a, there are three reasons why uh, pastors are called to do this. Uh, if you would, look with me to, uh, to uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 11 through 16. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come together in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself and love. There, there's a threefold thing we see here in verse 13 through 15. Uh, it's, it's, we are to, to teach the word of God. We are to preach the word of God, first of all, for the perfecting of the saints. The perfecting of the saints. What does the word perfect or perfecting mean? M maturing. Because none of us are perfect. But uh, meaning there's, there's nothing wrong with us. But uh, the, the old, old, uh, old King James English perfecting means the maturing of. Uh, so when you talk about somebody being perfect and the Bible calls us to be perfect. It's, and we can't be perfect until we are completely change until that work is finished and that's when we get to heaven right but uh, uh, there is a perfecting and that's the maturing of the saints the spiritual growth uh, of the children of God so so we are to preach the word for the perfecting of the saints uh, secondly is for the work of the ministry the work of the ministry uh, says for the perfecting of the, of the let's see verse 12 for the perfecting uh, of the saints for the work of the ministry uh, what is the work of the ministry to preach the gospel, to, to preach in the church, to, 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 train, uh, to train up the new believers and older believers so that, so that we have maturing, the maturing of the, of the saints of God. Uh, what did Paul tell Timothy? That, to take those things which he had, he had observed and learned and, and hold on to those and then to take those and to, to teach faithful men of God that they may go, go out and teach others also. This, the work of the ministry doesn't stop here. It, the work of the ministry, uh, somebody joked, and I know they were joking, they said, said something about, well, you only have to work one day a week. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it would, that would be, that's just not true. 
right? And any pastor, uh, any, anybody that, that knows a pastor, like actually really know, knows that there's more to it than just getting up here and preaching. Uh, uh, my wife used to ask me, why does it take you so long to study? Because there's a lot I don't know. <laughs> but but uh, it's, you know, what we see here in, the, in this time here uh, is, is the tip of, the hours and hours of study that's put into any any message or any any lesson, and I preach four at least four times a week. Um, so so there's and then but then there's other work of the ministry, and it's, again it's, it's sitting down with a couple that needs couples counseling or premarital counseling or sitting down with somebody who's struggling with that. I need to be able to not to give my opinion or to give them what the world has to say. I need to be able to share with them what the word of God has to say. Uh, there's, there, there's so much more to the work of the ministry than just the, the preaching from the pulpit of the word of God. There's the living of it and there's the, the, the counseling of it and then the, the teaching of it so that others can go and teach others also. Not only is the work of ministry, but we see it in the same, same verse there in verse 12. And I, my phone went dark. But it's the edification of the saints. What, is the, what does the word edific, edification mean? I heard somebody say it. Building up. The, the building up of the saints. The strengthening of the saints. Why must we build, why, why do the saints need built up? Because we all need it, Right? Uh, we we need to be strengthened not by not by popularity not by not by words of uh, of wisdom or comfort uh, which at times we all need words of wisdom and comfort but the comfort we need comes from God the strength we need comes from God the wisdom we need comes from God where can we find those words right here <laughs> everything that we need as children of God comes from the Word of God and the Spirit of God within us. Uh, but, uh, but it's uh, the, the preaching or the pastor's job is to, to, and the reason he's in the Word of God is for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, and the edifying. Because there, listen, it, for all of us, we're all weak. And, there are some people that are strong in some areas, but none of us are strong in all areas. There's a reason I, I go to all these pastors' conferences. Because I'm not strong in all areas, and I need to be built up, and I need, to be, I need preachers to preach at me. I appreciate the, the 558. I, don't, I, I rarely, very rarely am up at 558 to watch the, the 558. It's a pastor's devotional. It started out as pastors. Uh, brother Todd Bell started it. Uh, now Brother Ed Prescott is another pastor in, uh, in, in uh, Maine who, who kind of runs it for him. But uh, uh, I, I used to. I, get, I, I got up religiously, uh, but... I don't do that every day. I do get up, just not at 558. If I'm up, I don't necessarily always watch it then, but I watch it later. And I appreciate that it's geared towards pastors, so it's pointed towards, towards other preachers. And, and there are truths that everybody can gain from, but I need to be preached at too. There comes a point when, and, and any, anybody knows that you, you can only put out so much before you, you, you get charged back up. Now, I can be recharged by my own study of the Word of God, and I should be. But sometimes, sometimes I need somebody to preach at me. And so, so it's, it's, it's good for edification of me to have others preach at me and, and to teach. It's good for the edifying of our individual church uh, that they might be built up and be able to grow. And it's the po pastor's responsibility to develop the church. To, to, to Listen, as, as we... As we go through the doctrines, as we went through the, the previous doctrines, as we're going through these doctrines, it's, it's, it's the pastor's responsibility. Everything he preaches, uh, the gospel is, is to be a part of all of it. The love of God, the, the work of God is to be a part of all of it. There, there are things, the principles in the word of God that, that must be taught that it's my job to teach. It's the whole counsel of the word of God, not just whatever I picked for my hobby horse. It would be easier to preach the same thing. Every, I'd get really good at preaching the same thing every week. Man, it'd be nice. <laughs> but you would all get bored. And, and it'd be like, he, when, I was, when I first, years and years ago, uh, the first time I lost 100 pounds, um, I went on a diet and I started eating. And I knew that chicken, I was lifting weights, and, and uh, uh, I, was, I was in the best shape of my life that, that year. But I, I, I lost 100 pounds. I put on a bunch of muscle. Um, I was down to like five, four, uh, maybe 5 or 6% body fat. Was, I, was, uh, I was strong. And you know how I got there? I ate chicken. I ate so much chicken. For, 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 I, and I wasn't one who cooked. 
it, 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 I wasn't one who really cooked very much, so I went out and I bought a bunch of chicken, and I cooked it all at once. And I ate it for breakfast, I ate it for lunch, I ate it for dinner, I ate it for every snack. I just ate chicken, bland chicken, because you can't put anything on it, because that, that puts sugar and things on it. I hated chicken so much by the time I was done. I, I like, I can't eat chicken forever. Like, it, it took me uh, years before I could touch chicken again. Listen, uh, you all get tired of, uh, and, and uh, listen, the gospel's good, and, I can, and we should be able to appreciate the uh, gospel message, but if that's all you ever hear, you get hungry. If, it, 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 that's why we have other services, too. I, I, I'll be honest, I hear a lot of salvation message into our Sunday morning service because a lot of times we'll have visitors that come in that aren't saved. So come to the other services. Uh, come, to our, come to our Bible study because we get, we, we get into all manner of different things and, uh, uh, in the Word of God and teach and preach those things. Uh, it's good to have a well-rounded meal or diet. All right. So God has set the pastors in place to teach and preach the word of God in his churches. Now there are some restrictions to who is allowed to teach in a church. Look with me to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, we're going to look at 12 through 14. It says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What's in, what, what is this verse saying? It's talking about uh, those, uh, the, the time that those, there were teachers that needed someone to teach them. Uh, it says uh, the, the first principles of the oracles of God. They, they didn't even have a firm grasp of the basics of Christianity. And he said they had need of, uh, of them. Uh, uh, listen, it's important that before you teach somebody else something, you, you, you know what you're teaching. When I was, uh, when I was homeschooled, I, I, uh, my mom, I did uh, algebra 1 and 2. I made it through algebra 1, but algebra 2, I began to struggle. And my mom didn't graduate high school. She didn't, she didn't know algebra, too. She couldn't help me. I began to cheat and, and eventually turned myself in after several weeks. And, but do you know what helped? I found an algebra teacher to teach me algebra. Within a matter of, of two weeks, I was caught back up. I was months behind. And it, it took somebody to teach me what they, what they already knew. Can't teach CPR if you don't know CPR. You can't, teach, you can't teach the Word of God if you don't have a grasp on the Word of God. So, so, so the requirement that I see here is that, the, you, that you be skillful in what you're teaching. And if we're teaching the Word of God, that doesn't mean you have every answer. I don't have every answer, but I know where to get it. Right, uh, uh, you, you have to have a grasp on the basics and be able to be, be able to, as, as it says, uh, uh, be able to handle the strong meat. Um, because you need to be a, a mature Christian and skillful in the Word of God. So, how do you get there? One, study that show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're going to keep banging on this here, uh, but and two, be taught. You know, take, you know, take the Word of God, study it, uh, go to, get, come to Bible study and, and, and study those things. And, and that's, uh, I went to a Bible, Bible, a Bible institute out of my church. We, we've not had one here. Maybe something we'll look into if we've got people that are willing to do it. Um, the, it was a three-year Bible institute. I graduated with, uh, at the top of my class, there were seven of us. <laughs> But it was a good, solid Bible education. I mean, we got into 
everything. They made they made us all get up and speak. We had speech and we had, to, well, had to preach and but several other things. But but it was a man, a solid Bible education. Uh, you know, if that's something that you, people were willing to come and be a part of, let, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I, but it can't be. You have institute. One night a week or every other week. I think we did it every. We did it one night a week back then. But then we, people only come up for the first two weeks because then you know, there, there's no graduating. It's a. It's. You got to have a love or a hunger for the Word of God. A love or a hunger for the Word of God. Now the question is. Oh, one other. One other uh, thing we'll look at. First Timothy chapter two verse twelve. One they have to. The one restriction is they must be of full age. They must be spiritually mature and able to handle the Word of God. Two, there is a restriction here in First Timothy chapter two, verse twelve, and this has to do not with their ability to handle the word of God, but the role in which God has placed us in. This is verse twelve. It says, "But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority, authority over the man, but to be in silence." I understand that doesn't mean women are not allowed to open their mouths when they come into church, and it does not mean that women are not allowed to teach. It says, look at it again, it says, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp the authority over the man. Uh, uh, again, this has to do with the roles that God has put us in, not your intelligence, or your handling of the scripture, or your ability. This has to do with the roles God has put us in. And, and it's, so the, the usurping of authority means uh, the, the taking of authority. If I've asked you to teach a class, or you've been given authority by the, in the church to teach a class, then you have the authority to, te- to teach that class. Well, one of the things this does, though, is it, 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 it keeps or it, it takes away the, the, the possibility that a, woman, uh, that a woman is allowed to be a pastor of a church. Because you must be apt to teach and be able to teach in the church. Again, it has nothing to do with the gender it has to do with the roles in which God has put, put upon us. Now, why are Christians to be educated? Or why are believers to be educated in the Word of God? There are three major reasons why every child of God must be taught and grounded in the Word of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It is just after 3 o'clock. I'll see if I can get through this in the next 15 minutes. I, th- I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. It says this. Then, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Uh, there were problems back in the church uh, back in those days, that, uh, especially as they were trying to trying to really get a grasp on, on, on all the doctrines. There would always somebody coming in with, well, we believe that this is a new doctrine, and it would take away from the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, there were some that would, uh, that would try to add, add uh, the, the needing to do, to do the law before salvation or after salvation. Either one, they, was, they were trying to add things into what God had said. And, and uh, so we need to be very careful. So the way, one of the reasons we must be educated is so that we're stable or we have a solid foundation in the Word of God, that we won't be tossed to and fro by every possibility and every doctrine. If we don't know what the Word of God teaches, we don't know what's right and what's wrong. And we'll follow whatever is out there. It's very important that we have an understanding of the doctrine. Look at Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, we'll look at verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause the visions and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned, and avoid them. How can you mark them if you don't know what, you're, what you've learned? There is... There are pastors out there, there are preachers out there, there are teachers out there um, that teach false doctrine. And they are, they are getting people to, the, to, to drawing people to them by, by 
the hundreds and thousands because people don't know what they believe. It's important that we have that grounding. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Again, that, the idea of being rooted in the word of God and established, and established in our faith in those things that we've been taught. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether, whether by word or our epistle. And last one we're going to look at with this, Hebrews 13, 9. It says, Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them, that they have been occupied therein. Again, the idea is that we be not be carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. And the best way to not be fall into a false doctrine is to know what the Bible teaches about doctrine. There is a doctrine out there called replacement theology. You know what it is? Replacement theology is, is the belief that in Romans chapter 11, when God cut off Israel and grafted in the Gentiles, the church, that God is now done with Israel. And every, and every time in the New Testament that it talks about the, when the name or word Israel is mentioned, they believe that, that you substitute the church in there, and that all those promises are for the church, that Israel, God is done with Israel because of their sin. Can you refute it? Good. We need to be able to. Because that teaching is out there. And it is, it is getting hold of people and drawing them out. Uh, the, there's a church, and I won't get into who it is or what it is right now, but there's a church that, that teaches this stuff. And they send their people out to other churches. And those people, will, they, they believe in salvation. They believe in a lot of, they're very similar but they'll infiltrate the church and then they'll begin to teach that doctrine and it splits that church wide open. There, it, it, as sad, as ridiculous as it sounds, it happens all the time. We need to be careful. We need to know the word of God so that we have a firm understanding of the word of God, that we stand firm in it. Uh, not only are we to be educated for our stability, but also for service. Ephesians chapter 4 again, verse 15. It says, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up unto him unto all things, which is the head, even Christ. We must be able to speak the truth, but we must also speak it in love. There is a difference. There is a big difference. Paul t tells Timothy uh, that, that uh, let's, see if I, let's take a look at 1 Timothy real quick. I believe it's 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy. It's in chapter 1. I'll tell you in a second. As soon as I see it, it's marked in my Bible. First, First Timothy chapter one, verse five says, "Now the end of the commandment is charity." Let's actually uh, look at verse three. And I, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. So he's telling them to, be, to help, help them to understand what they're teaching. They're not teaching any false doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. So he's saying, make sure you help them in what they understand, that they're not following after false doctrine endless, or fables and endless genealogies and, and, and things that don't edify. Now, at the end of the commandment, is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith and feigned. For which some, having swerved, meaning some have left the teaching of the word of God with love, have turned aside unto vain jangling. What does 1 Corinthians say? That I can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not charity. I am become a sounding brass. And a tinkling cymbal. All that all it means is, and I won't do it because it makes a lot of noise, but somebody up here banging pots and pans, and I could be up here preaching the very truth, but if I'm preaching it not in love, what are you going to hear? Amen. Nothing. Nothing. It's important that we understand uh, uh, that we're, we are to speak, the, speak truth, but we're to speak it in love. 
speaking in love for serve, for, as we serve others and serve the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Again, uh, it's how can we give reason for the hope that is within us if we're not already educated in that reason? It's not just, well, I think about, or I think this way, or I feel this way, or my pastor said, you need to be able to show from the word of God why you have that reason, why you have that that faith. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. I should have muted that. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. We're almost done. For when the times you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Uh, uh, we ought to be teachers. We ought to be able to instruct others in the Word of God. And it should not always be left for the pastor to teach the Word of God. That's what We have some, some great uh, Sunday school teachers. I praise God that we have people that can teach the Word of God. Uh, it, it's, you are to be teachers. We are all to be teachers. So, so again, that's why it's for, it's for our service. Uh, also look at 2 Timothy 3.17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is talking about what Scripture is for. Right? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, not necessarily just the pastor, but that each one of us, and not just necessarily a man either, though man or woman of God, uh, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We need to be able to perform those good works, and how can we do that without, without knowledge of what God would have us to do? And thirdly, sanctification. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be done with, with this, I believe. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 4, again, verses 20 through 24. says this, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be rude, renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, it's for our sanctification. It's for your sanctification. Know the word of God. Learn the truths of the word of God so you know how to live. Romans chapter 12, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. This, that was our, our, our message this morning. Be not transformed by, or be, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How is that renewed? Through the word of God. Not necessarily just the preaching from the, from the pulpit. Uh, that should be part of it. But the, the, your study at home, and uh, it's, it's, we need to be educated for these reasons so we know how to live. Now when, uh, when and how? All the time. Acts chapter 2, uh, we, we see that they continued, after verse 42, they continued in the doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. It was a daily occurrence. Uh, half, uh, Acts 5.42 tells us that it, it happened every single day. Listen, that doesn't mean that, that we have church every single day. We don't have church every single day. Get into the Word every single day. And take every opportunity that you are available and able to, uh, to, to be a part of, uh, of the Bible studies or, 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 or church services. It is not required to come to every service to be saved. I'm, let me put this out there. It is not required. If the doors are open and you're, not, and you're not able to be here, you're not here for service, that doesn't mean you're not saved. But I will, I, will, I, will, I, I will put this out there, that those who have a desire to grow and those who have a desire to see God work will do everything that they can to allow God to use that in their life. Right? Uh, uh, there's a pastor, uh, 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 Paul Chappell is his name out. Uh, he says, three, three to thrive. Uh, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Uh, and those that thrive and serve in their church, he says, it's, it's almost, regardless, you see the people that are busy and working and, and God is using them, they're there as much as they can be. 
And it's something that you see in those that, that don't come to all, the, not necessarily all the services, but to what they can. Not everybody can come to all the services. Again, I'm not saying that, that you're out of the will of God if you're not here this afternoon. Or that's, you know, don't say, well, let's take names because we can, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm, what I'm saying is those who have a desire that really want to grow, if they can be. There was a period of time when I couldn't be here every other Sunday. I worked. And there was... People didn't stop calling 911 because it was Sunday. In fact, sometimes they called it more, right? There are times when people can't be here. It's, there, there are times when there are family obligations or illnesses, and if you're sick, stay home, right? Don't, don't bring it in so that we all get sick, and you're the only one at church next week. <laughs> there, there, are, there are times when it's better not to be here. Because you need the, because of your health or because you can't be here because of your work, but if you can be, man, as much as we can, we should we should we should. Uh, Wednesday night service, perfect example. I, I appreciate what brother uh, brother Troy said. He came he came in late. We had we actually had I, I count I counted my kids and they don't really you know, uh, but we had eight, with my kids we had eighteen here. Praise God for that. Yeah. We prayed. Man, we, we, we prayed for over an hour. I didn't get to preach again. I, I, I shared a verse. That, that's all I get to do on Wednesday nights anymore. I'm glad we started the Tuesday night Bible study. I get to preach again in the middle of the week. It's, you know, it's, but that's good. You know why they're here? Not because somebody got up here, because I got up here and said, you're in sin if you're not here. They have a desire to be in prayer with the people of God. And they have the opportunity to be here. Again, not everybody can be here. I get that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to beat on those that want to be here but can't be here. Right? There are times when it's just not possible. I get it. Been there. But man, what a blessing it is when we come together. What a blessing it is when we're able to do this. So study the Word of God on a daily basis. Be in the Word of God, uh, seeking that, that spiritual education uh, through through our services. Through through. Uh, the, if you have any questions, come to me. Or uh, again, I may not have the answers, but I know where we can get them. And it's not off Google, right? I would pray through the Word of God, and pray, read the Word of God, pray about it, and, and seek those things. It was done publicly, house to house. Uh, Paul instructs the church at Ephesus there in the Book of Acts that that that's how he taught there for three years. I went public house to house. In, uh, uh, in Acts 20, 31, it was done night and day. I mean, uh, he, that's how he was able to say that his hands were free from the blood of all men because he had spent every moment, every opportunity sharing the gospel with anybody that would listen. Uh, I was talking to Brother Perry Jones uh, here just this, this last week, and he, w- he mentioned that uh, uh, one of the things that he is doing now, or is trying to do, it's, a, it's his intention, is that he would have a Bible study every day at somebody's house. Even if it's just them and that family, he'll go in because he has a lot of a, a lot of families that have come from from Africa. They don't speak English very well, and it's hard to get everybody together at, at the same time. And, and it's just it's difficult. He goes, so he goes, I want to go to their house, and he goes, every day that, that's his plan. Whether he's able to do it or not, I don't know. But what a blessing that is, daily, house to house, and that's the ministry of the Word of God. And and then in Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-seven. We, are, we need to be careful that we teach the whole counsel of the Word of God. And I've, I've, I've quoted that verse several times. And it's the whole counsel. Not a, not a part or a per- portion or a parcel. It is from A to Z. Genesis to Revelations. And that may take a long time. <laughs> In fact, it will take a long time. It took us all, over a year to get through the book of Acts. Uh, let alone the rest of it. The other 65 books. But we need to teach the whole counsel of the Word of God. And that, that means not just every book, but every principle that's taught in the Word of God. Every, every truth. And how we're to live. I'm grateful for this book. Because it is our, the instruction book in which we are to live. Uh, and uh, may, we, may we seek to learn from it. May God help us to grow. And may, as our church grows in maturity and in knowledge of the word of God may we grow. We had 44 people here this morning, 44 adults here and several, several who've been just coming over the last few weeks. Praise the Lord for that. I, f- I almost felt like our church was tilted this way. Everybody sat on one side. <laughs> now the rest of you guys need to get people over on here on your side. <laughs> oh goodness. All right. 
Let's go ahead and uh, we'll close in prayer. Um, the, the last portion of it, we're, we don't have time to get through it, but it's talking about the education of preachers. And I'll, 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 I'll say this. Scripturally, things are to go kind of like they did with, with, with Pastor Williams and myself. Churches are meant to raise up preachers, to educate, to teach those preachers. Uh, I don't see, the only churches I saw that were, they had preachers put into them were those that were preachers that were brought up by Paul who started those churches. Uh, Paul sent Titus and Paul sent Timothy. They didn't come from uh, the area where they were preaching. Uh, but it, it's good for a pastor to teach, to raise up and teach a young man and, and have that man grow up and, and either go out and preach or there, and there goes into many different reasons behind it. Um, and we, we may talk about those next week. We'll see. But uh, go home this week. Study your word. Study the word. And uh, let's see what God will do. Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that you bless us. We ask you to help us. Lord, we, we need your help to understand and study the word of God. Help us to be grounded in, your, in your, your, the doctrines of your word and the truth. And Lord, that we can never be shaken, that we can never be moved away from, uh, from the great truths of salvation. And, and uh, Lord, what great doctrines we, you've given to us, Lord. I am so thankful for all you've given to us. Help us to hold fast to it. Help us to teach it to others. Lord, help us to get out and to share the gospel with the world around us. Lord, uh, somebody shared it with me this morning. That your, the mission field starts with the ground right between our feet. Lord, help us to, to get out and to, to, to share the gospel, Lord. Bring others in to see them saved. And, uh, and, and Lord, raised up in the doctrines and the truth of your word. We love you, Father. We ask for your help because we need it. In Jesus' precious name, amen.